Today is Monday, May the 6th, 2013, and my name is Nancy Ungerman. The videographer is Ruth Andrus, and we will be interviewing Randy Perlman for the Dallas Jewish Historical Society. And we are, and we are at the Jewish Community Center. So, hello. Hello. Randy. Let's start at the beginning. Tell me about your family as far as Dallas is concerned. Were they born and raised here? Uh, nobody was born and raised here. Uh, my grandfather, my mother's parents, my grandfather was born in New York. My mother was born in St. Joan, St. Joe, Missouri. Oh, St. Joe. And uh, they got married in Wichita, which is where my mother was born. And, uh, okay. And, okay, these are your grandparents. My grandparents then. on my mother's side. Uh-huh. And where were they born? In uh, My parents? Your grandparents. My grandparents. Uh, my grandfather born in New York City. Ah. And my grandmother in St. Joe. So you go way back. Where were your great, great? Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> I understand I have English, Polish, Egyptian, and there's something else there in the mix, I don't remember. But my, my uh, father's parents were born in Poland, although one of the, uh, I think he disagrees with my aunt, uh, she says, I think, Russia. But they came over, actually this October is my grandfather's 100th birthday of getting here. He came in October of 1913, see I did my homework. Yes, you did. And uh, in through Galveston, and from Poland, says my father. And my uh, grandmother came in through New York, and they all met uh, in po in uh, Palestine, Texas, Palestine, Palestine Texas. Texas, Palestine. Excuse me. <laughs> and um, I'm glad you made that clear. <laughs> well, yeah, Palestine, Palestine's a little different. And then um, my parents met in Houston growing up. Uh, my my grandparents, my father's parents, died when he was 13. Mm -hmm. So his older sister brought him up basically in Houston. That's where my parents met. And then they got married and went to the army in Georgia. I'm making this fast. Went to the army in Georgia. Uh, and then settled in Dallas in 1956. My grandfather settled in Dallas before then. He was what, in the jewelry business. What brought them to Dallas? Well, uh, my grandfather came because he was working with Zales. He was like an executive supervisor of managers. And then uh, became president of Zales. He was president for a while. Mm -hmm. And my parents came uh, because my father was in advertising, worked at Bloom Advertising for a long time, 26 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, then me and I've got two older brothers, we were all born in Dallas, born and raised. Mm -hmm. Where did you go to school? At, Green Hill. Green Hill? Green Hill. I was a 12 year, first grade to 12th grade. Um, loved it. Uh, by the 11th, year, I was kind of ready to move on, you know, but uh, there was a lot about Green Hill that was just fantastic. It was a good education. It allowed me to explore and do a lot of things that I don't know if I would have done in a public school. I think in a public school I would have been a wallflower just leaning against the wall. And Green Hill, I think, allowed my creative side to explore. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what do, you, what do your parents, what did your parents do for a living? You said advertising. My father was in advertising. My mother owned a Needle and Haystack. She started with um, Doris Budner. Um, ah, I should have made sure. Joan Hansel and Judy Stahl. The four of them started, uh, and I think my mother had the store for about 19 years. And uh, they've done otherwise a lot of volunteer work and stuff around. Where did you live growing up? Uh, first 10 years over on uh, Hillcrest and Spring Valley, on Brookcrest. And then, um, love that house, it was a split level house. Mm -hmm. And then uh, moved to Yolanda, which is in the Preston Royal area, and lived there until I graduated high school, went off to college. And your college was? College USC, Southern California. A little different from Green Hill. Oh, thank you. She gave me a high I'm from California. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I knew there was a reason. Jewish affiliations as um, in your childhood? For me, no. I, I wasn't a part of AZA and all that. I didn't do that because I was so busy doing other things. Mm -hmm. 
musically and, and acting wise and, and through Temple I did some stuff. I was involved with the choir during high school. So Simon got me, Simon Sargon got me very heavily involved even back then before I went off. Um, my brothers were part of AZA and stuff, but that wasn't something I did. I don't know why. I did go to Israel, uh, you know, the Israel teen tours, which was fabulous, you know, the six week see, see the country. And that was actually back when the Sinai was part of Israel. So it was, so it was pretty cool, you know, went down to a lot, and then all the way down to the bottom of the Sinai. And uh, I want to say Sharm el Sheikh, I hope I'm right on that. And uh, um, diving in there, you know, snorkeling down off the waters there, so it was really cool and blue and it was beautiful. And uh, then sang in Temple. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to hear about your careers because I've been following you for years. But... Yeah, you're that person. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I went to uh, USC four years. Uh, graduated with a BFA, Bachelor of Fine Arts, and in drama theater and proceeded to move to New York. I lived in New York for about eight years and did uh, a lot of stuff out of town. Uh, nothing really in New York except for down on Avenue E or something like that. There are, actually is an E way over to the side. Um, and that was one where I was rolling around on the floor that wasn't something to brag about. Uh, waited a lot of tables, worked at Ticketron, telecharge ticket agency. Uh, my worst job, I was one of those nauseating people that calls you during dinner and asks you for opinions. It was not selling. I will not sell on the phone. I can't stand that. But uh, I was one of those people that has a list that these are the people that they're interested in. And you call and say, I've got a survey. And you have to complete the whole survey before you get paid. Oh, I hated it. One survey went on for 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Somebody talked to me about tennis. So anyway, um, moved back to Dallas in 91 because I was getting a little bit tired of the acting stuff there. I had turned union and what I was auditioning for was just really not mm -hmm. what I'd be there for. It just got to be a little old rote. And I actually got hit by a cab, so that kind of deflated my New York excitement. And um, Are you self? No. It's terrible to say if I had hurt myself, it would have been a lot easier. But uh, they've got in New York these no fault laws which keep stuff out of courts, you know, rightfully so, I guess. At the time, I didn't think so. But um, So I was hurt, but not enough to make things go faster. Mm -hmm. um, but I was getting a little disenchanted, and there was an opening at my father's company. Uh, you had asked me where my father worked. He did advertising for so long. What I didn't say is after 26 years, little side trip here. Um, after 26 years, he started an invitation company called Glad Tidings. Uh, actually, at the time, it was Good Times and Glad Tidings. We shortened it through the years. And there was kind of an opening there. And what better way to get a job through family? <laughs> so I moved down. My brother was working with him, uh, my brother Greg. And he went off into another direction. And I kind of filled in his spot, became um, a national sales manager. Considering I went to school for a Bachelor of Fine Arts, I had no idea what I was doing. But uh, it was, you know, it, I learned and I've been there for 22 years almost, which is amazing as far as I'm concerned. Randy, you, you're, you're older than you look. Thank how, you. How old I think. are you? <laughs> how old am I? Yeah. I shouldn't have to say. Oh, you don't have um, No, I'm 51. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's on record. Mm -hmm. The productions here, can you name some of the um, uh, the theaters that you've been in? Yeah, well, the funny thing is when I moved back to Dallas, I didn't think, I thought I was getting out of acting. I even gave up my makeup kit, great makeup kit. Mm -hmm. Lots of stuff in there. Um, but I started working again. I think the first thing I did was uh, at the Jewish Community Center. And uh, it was a show called Putting It Together. And uh, it was just a show filled with all sorts of uh, Jewish composers. Um, and that's uh, where I met John, my partner. And that was 
19 years ago, because I've been the job for 19 years. And uh, since then, I've worked at Plano Repertory Theater. Uh, I've worked at Theater 3, Water Tower. Water Tower Theater, which I love, five minutes away from my house. Uh, I think I said Theater 3. Lyric Stage, I've worked at Lyric Theater, that does all the musicals. I've worked at Echo, um, Stage West in Fort Worth, um, Garland Summer Musicals, um, I know I'm forgetting people, Uptown Players. I, so I don't know if I'm repeating keep, things. You, you obviously keep very busy. Well, I've been, very, I've been very lucky. I've been very, very lucky. Um, I'm really lucky because starting soon I'm at Dallas Theater Center, which is something I grew up with here, you know, thinking, oh wow, you know, what a great, amazing place. And here I am about to work there. It's, it's kind of, it's very exciting for me. I'm going to be second pirate to the right, but who cares? Um, and uh, I've also started doing uh, non-theater work, but still acting. I mean, I've done uh, recently, uh, played Jack Ruby in a uh, movie called Tammy True. It's a documentary. True Tales, I'm sorry, all about Tammy True, which is one of Jack Ruby's uh, main strippers. <clears throat> during the uh, Kennedy assassination. So it's kind of part documentary and part uh, reenacted scenes where I get to be Jack Ruby. The other day I was actually in this cell. That was a little eerie, but I loved it. It's a good feeling. And I've done some voiceover work uh, for anime and, and stuff like that. So I've been keeping busy on that end. I've been lucky. Um, this is a question that I know the answer to, but because you went to Green Hill, you went to USC. Did you ever meet with any anti-Semitism? You know, I never, I knew it was there as far at USC, but I never really, I never really felt it. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in the Jewish, I was in the fraternity there. I guess that was, I could have said that earlier too. Mm -hmm. I was a Sammy. Uh, and there was some anti-Semitism going on with that, but, you know, it really wasn't prevalent in my life. I've, I guess I've been very lucky considering my choices in life uh, as far as, not Jewish is not a choice, but uh, neither is my, my relationship with John. But I've been around a lot of incredibly supportive people. Everybody in my life has been supportive, and it's been a blessing. It's been wonderful. How did you and John meet? Uh, through the Jewish Community Center. He was the uh, music uh, conductor. Oh, I do a lot of us, don't I? Uh, he was the uh, music director, and um, he still does music right now. He does uh, accompanying for the Plano Civic Chorus. So he gets to arrange music for me every once in a while. Good. Good. Your parents have been very active in yes, the Jewish do. community. Your, I think your mother particularly. They, they both have, have done a lot, and you're right, my mom is, you know, I look at my parents and I get amazed because the amount of friends they have just boggles my mind, and it's incredible. And I think it's from doing all of this volunteer work they've done. Uh, National Council of Jewish Women, they've done federation. I think she told me um, that they've been involved in almost, between either together or apart, almost every board and federation for a very long time. Uh, my mother started Encore uh, Sale with, um, with Ann Sikora and Betty Marcus. Boy, my homework did really well, didn't it? <laughs> I even have names and dates. Um, uh, very active in the vocal alcove uh, for many years. They didn't start with it, but uh, with, with Doris Budner and Larry Budner. But for many, many years, they were very active in it. And um, I salute them. I think they're amazing people. Another question I like to ask is, what has been your favorite decade? You really like to ask that? My favorite decade? Huh. There's a poser. You haven't had that many decades. We well, understand. I've had five decades <laughs> working on the sets. Um, I think 
the 90s uh, when I got back to town and life here was just so much easier than New York um, not living in a little two by four apartment which was actually my grandfather's sister's apartment she lived there for seven not 70 years 30 or 40 years so she was paying 70 that's right the 70 came and she was paying 70 something a month I didn't get to pay 70 something when I moved in and you know it raised but it was still an amazing place and for six out of seven years I loved it but then you know having the bathroom over there and the kitchen over there and the and everything right there just drove me nuts uh, but when I moved here, my quality of life was better. I was closer to my parents, closer to my family. Uh, started doing stuff with the temple and with Simon's help and guidance. Journey down a life path that I'm still on that I never thought I would be on. Um, and again, love that so much. So I, I've, I've gotten to do a lot of things in Dallas and it all started in the 90s. So. Has Dallas... Is this going to be one of those questions you'd like to ask? Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. I'm prepared. <laughs> um, has Dallas changed s since you were growing up and now? Or uh, how has Dallas changed? Bigger. Bigger? Yeah. Plano used to be Oklahoma. So, I remember. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I live out north, which I never thought I'd live out north. When I went to Green Hill, that was the edge of town. Mm -hmm. When I moved in 91, the tollway ended at Frankfurt. It came and there was a stoplight, and that's where I've lived ever since I moved back here. And now that's almost the center of town. You know, Dallas is just, and the arts community has gotten amazing in Dallas. Uh, the theaters that have come up, the uh, theater attendance, the quality, the uh, all the buildings downtown, the Arts Center, the Arts District, it's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Do you have the same group of friends that you had growing up, or have you been exposed through the theater? Well, I mean, you know, as, as far as growing up, I see them a lot because I do a lot of the bars and bar, bars and bat mitzvahs, but name mitzvah. Um, and so I see a lot of, I'm in contact with them that way, but as far as close friends, there's a couple of high school friends that I still see and talk to. Uh, but you're right, it's, everybody moves on, I think, except for my parents, they have friends, uh, as I said earlier. Um, uh, no, but through acting, I've got a lot of friends there. I, it, there was one time in my life, it was the strangest thing, where a lot of my really close friends were divorcee women in the choir. They were older. I couldn't figure it out, but I loved it. I mean, we were very close friends and, mm -hmm. and uh, still keep up with those. Unfortunately, some of those have passed. Um, now I'm going to get sad. Thank you. Uh, but, uh, you know, life, life goes on. Everybody goes on. Who would be but Facebook lets you keep in contact. Who would be your role models? Who are your role models? Uh, I saw that question down there. I knew you were going to ask me that. I, it's hard to think of role models. I, I mean, I think of my parents, and they're just amazing people to, to look up to and be. I look at um, the way, like, Debbie Stern and Debbie Robbins, David Stern and Debbie Robbins, how they deal with people and, and treat people and kids and stuff, and I think it's just amazing. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm really sure. <laughs> okay. Um, you've been so involved with the temple. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Well, it more. started uh, when I moved back in '91. Uh, Harold Kleinman made the suggestion to join the choir. I thought, why not? <coughs> and Simon was still there, who I told you uh, is just very strong influence and I loved it. The group was wonderful. I did not do it all the time. But then slowly through the first couple of years Simon encouraged me to take a bigger part and start doing solo work and uh, actually got me to start doing Friday evening services. I started doing Shabbat services on Friday evening 
and then that evolved to bar mitzvahs. And the bar mitzvahs themselves evolved from being out of the way, hidden upstairs in the choir loft, What's you know, with a, a, when did that happen? Yeah. No, that was in the, in the 90s. It was, uh -huh. uh, you know, we were with a microphone hidden, sitting down, sitting in a chair, and then when it was our time to sing, we'd stand up and go to the microphone and sing, and then sit back down. And not really a part of the service, but just kind of here, you know, over overlaying. Uh, and then we'd slowly kind of maybe go down. First, we were I was down in front of the bima in the chair next to the piano player. Then I would be on the bima over to the side. And then it was with I remember exactly it was with Amanda Kleinman. It was the very first time that I was actually at the bima uh, with the rabbi and the child. Um, I think, again, the fact that I got so involved doing all these bar mitzvahs was happenstance because I was the only soloist that was Jewish that, that did the bar mitzvahs. Um, but the more and more I did, the more I learned. I took lessons with uh, Shirley Fisher, amazing woman, uh, and she taught me uh, once I started being down the beam, I told David Stern, I said, um, I'd like to not hold my book. Yeah, I'd like to hold the prayer book, not the, you know, like, you know, I want to be more a part of the service. And he said, well, we could do that. And he arranged for me to meet with Shirley, and we met every night, every Tuesday night, and I brought dinner, and mm -hmm. um, we dissected those services Hebraically, where I knew what I was doing. And again, more confidence built up. And uh, then it got to the point we started getting canters, and I was very lucky because one canter can't do it all. Um, and Annie Bornstein, they kept it so I would do one of the services, she'd do one of the services, and then when it turned into Richard Cohn, they kept it the same way. Uh, so I've been doing I've been doing services for about sixteen years, and I started thinking, knowing this was going to happen, I. I I have worked with, I've done services with, let's see, Re, uh, Levi Olin and Jack Bentbrad were my rabbis, along with Gerald Klein. Gerald Klein bar mitzvahed with me. Then I have actually done services with Gerald Klein, Shelley Zimmerman before he left, Brian Zimmerman, which is a lot later, uh, David Stern, Deborah Robbins, Asher Knight, Kim Herzog Cohen, Mark Kaiserman, Peter Berg, Alan Allen, Adam Allenberg, uh, Ray, Rachel Goldenberg, um, I know, oh, Warren Hayom. I mean, I have gotten to work with some incredible rabbis, and each time I basically do the same thing, mm -hmm. but I just sit back and the way they treat, I don't know how they don't start repeating themselves. Um, talk about role models. Um, but just listening, I've learned so much for them. I've gotten, these services give me so much aura of Judaism and feeling of connection that I just love. Now, unfortunately, that's coming to an end soon, which, you know, backs are backs. Why? Well, they're getting a second canter at Temple, so all the things that I'm used to doing mm -hmm. will now be done by the second tenor, uh, second canter. Um, breaks my heart, but I totally understand, and hopefully I'll be able to do this somewhere else because there are things that I have not learned. But to go to Kent Royal School at 51 is not exactly what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, do you owe these transitions to, well, Shelley's, Rabbi Zimmerman must have started the metamorphosis to, you know, canter. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, excuse me for picking my ear. <laughs> I'm comfortable, aren't I? Um, I don't know if it was really him that started it. I think the Jewish movement has made a shift. I mean, when I grew up and got bar mitzvah, I was in the, what, the 12th row sitting on the aisle, and we didn't do anything in the bar mitzvahs until the tour service came up, we went up and did, did, did our do and sat down. I think from an outsider point of view, as much outsider as I am, 
I feel like reform has gone its way to conservative, conservative has shifted this way. I mean, everything's just shifted to be a little bit more Jewish, mm -hmm. um, more, uh, a little, I'm not sure what I want to say, but I think I said it. I mean, mm -hmm. I think things have shifted. So I think the natural place to be up in the choir loft singing over people's heads, mm -hmm. heard but not seen, was just no longer desired. Um, I think people wanted an inclusive, people wanted a service which everybody was involved rather than a performance. And that's one thing that I have strived in all my services is to not be the actor performing, mm -hmm. you know. But I do try to connect with people because I think that's what people are there in services for is to be connected with. Um, and uh, did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Oh, okay. Yes, it did. Well, you've been terrific. Oh. Thank you. You've been just terrific. Is there anything that you would want to add? Because you've answered everything there that I've had to ask. <laughs> so. no. Uh, no, I guess not. But if anybody is out there that are Perlmans that are related to someone in Poland or Russia, because <laughs> my father does knows he probably had siblings, but yet has no idea what uh, that is. Parents, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. have uh, siblings but has no idea who they might be. You know. uh, but no, I, I think that covers it all. Randy, thank you very much. Oh, you're very